If you are in the housing market, whether that means buying or selling and you're not sure what you should do, watch this video, okay? To the end. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about real estate in general, where I think it will be going, if prices will be going up or going down. I will give you compelling arguments for both sides and it is your responsibility to make that decision. All that and more is keep it locked. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. So welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money, but for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. Please be sure to subscribe because we talk about everything from personal finance to investing to the economy. Let's get into it. All right, so normally housing is influenced by a couple of factors. That would be the interest rate that you're paying, supply and demand, obviously, and then lending standards. So the Federal Reserve pretty much, and it's a little bit more complicated than this, but long story short, the Federal Reserve can kind of control the interest rates for the whole market just by adjusting their federal funds rate. And I don't want to get into details on this video, but if you do want a video on that, you can drop it in the comments. But basically, things t tend to move in lockstep with the Fed fund rate. They will typically lower their interest rates to incentivize people to get into a home or to get into whatever, just to get into more debt, really. And as you may or may not know, interest rates are pretty much on the floor right now. <laughs> I mean, we've reached all-time lows. I believe last time I checked, the housing rate was 3.4. So you can get a house for 3.4% interest for 30 years, which is pretty awesome so through my research i found some things that can suggest whether you will go straight up or straight down or some kind of mix in between and then i'll also let you know what i'm gonna be doing so let's talk about deflation first specifically why i think prices can be potentially going down so first one is harder lending requirements like i mentioned before there's some there's certain things that do affect the prices of homes okay chase has said starting in april they will be requiring a 700 credit score and 20 percent down for your home Last time I checked, I think the average that people put down is actually 10%. So now Chase is requiring double that amount in order for you to get a home. Now there's a couple of reasons why they would do that, but basically uncertainty and then liquidity drying up. Chase is an extremely large bank. I would not be surprised if other banks followed suit. In fact, I do think other banks have already started to follow suit. And when that happens, it becomes much more expensive to buy a home for the average person. And that means a lot of the demand will evaporate, right? Because a lot of people don't put down 10, 20%. Like in my area, that would be upwards of sixty or $70,000, which not a lot of people just have laying around, okay? <laughs> if you go by the US debt clock, they say that each family only has about $13,000, which is nowhere near 20% in my area. But now you have less demand and maybe the same amount of supply, that will push prices down because now these people don't have as many people to sell their homes to. So they'll have to put the price down or maybe people can no longer afford a $500,000 house because their 20% would really only get them into a $300,000 house. So that will pull the price down. Another deflationary point is loss of jobs. Obviously, not all these jobs are completely lost. Once the economy gets back up and running, there will be people getting back into the workforce. But you have to remember, this V-shaped recovery that they're talking about will not exist. There's still going to be people who are afraid to travel. People are still not going to want to shop. So let's say you, you have a Macy's. Are you going to get hired back? Maybe not. They might just hire a small group and kind of see how the traffic is picking up and then as things get back to normal then they'll bring the whole workforce back on so it might take a while for people to actually get their jobs back and that again it's less demand because now maybe i wanted to buy a house but my income isn't looking like it used to look before so i'm not going to be able to that'll pull prices down also more supply okay maybe people again kind of tying in with the other points i made maybe people lost their job they don't see themselves getting another job back but they have this house with all this equity and if you're somebody who's a little bit nervous about what the market's going to do you might want to capture that equity right because let's say you had a house that was worth five hundred thousand when you bought it you paid it down to four hundred thousand but at this moment it's worth seven hundred thousand you can get a nice cute little check you know so why would you want your money sitting in a house some people think right so they'll try to sell their house to kind of pull that equity out and that would mean a lot more supply going into the market with the same or even less amount of demand because of the other factors that i mentioned also let's talk about this new proposed bill um because this bill is honestly quite quite shocking and they have provisions in there that would basically say that if you are an investor which i think you should always consider real estate an investment even if you consider just living in there and you don't have any intentions on renting it out you should always look at it as an investment but anyway if this bill passes 
they pretty much make it impossible for these landlords to not have to get this money okay because they're gonna block people from paying rent and the landlord is the one that has to go recoup this rent payment from this fund that the government's going to create if they take money from that fund they cannot raise rent for five years and a lot of people who buy real estate properties they would factor in like percent rent percent increases so if you're telling me for five years i cannot even raise my rent yeah i want to get out of this because this might be sucking up all my money also within this bill you can only sell to specific buyers for the first 60 days you want to sell your house and the specific buyers are pretty much all government entities so you can only sell your house to the government for 60 days then after no one from the government wants anything to do with your property then you can sell it to the rest of us if this is something that would frighten me i would want to get rid of my house right now because i don't want to have my rent frozen for five years and i don't want to have to only be able to sell to a select few of people that doesn't really make sense and this is honestly bizarre and if i was somebody that was kind of on the fence of already selling my house i would damn sure want to sell it now because i don't want to end up having to go through all of this trouble of not getting any rent payments and having to apply to a fund and only having to sell to a select number of people like this is nuts all right so let's talk about the inflationary points why do i think that home prices can actually go up from here there are no more reserve requirements and if you did not know the banks when you deposit money in there they were supposed to keep at maximum 10% of your money in the bank and then they can go ahead and loan your money over and over and over again. Well, the Federal Reserve said that's not necessary. We don't have to keep any of your money on hand. So now your $1,000 can get loaned over and over and over and over again. They don't have to keep any of your $1,000 actually in the bank. Now, this kind of goes against what I said earlier because Chase is having more restrictions. But if things do take a turn and, you know, the economy starts looking a little bit better, they might actually reverse course and have even looser lending requirements because now I don't actually have to keep a reserve of anybody's money. I can just keep on loaning and loaning and loaning as a bank. I'm saying I, but I mean the bank. There's no incentive for me to kind of be more weird because I don't have to actually keep any money on hand anymore and in conjunction with that the Federal Reserve buys what we call mortgage-backed securities and that just for those who haven't really been on my channel before is when you go to a bank they give you a loan but they don't actually keep your loan on file because who wants to wait around 30 years for their money right so they will get a whole bunch of loans group it together and sell it to whoever the Federal Reserve decided hey you know we're gonna start buying those and they're buying it because they're really junk okay these loans that go into these mortgage-backed securities are mostly junk they're buying those up so for me as a bank if I know hey I can just originate a whole bunch of bad loans who cares give me all your money that'll prop prices up because now the demand will increase right because if now you weren't eligible for a house before but you are now now a lot of people are going to try to come and get a house right everybody wants to be a homeowner and from the bank's perspective it's really no risk because once i give you this loan i'm going to group all these loans together and sell them to a security which the federal reserve is buying hand over fist another inflationary point is universal basic income which i talked about in this video up here where the government's saying hey we're going to just give everybody two thousand dollars for the hell of it which obviously i'm never going to turn down this currency but it has long-term effects that could be catastrophic. But at any rate, if everybody's getting an extra $2,000 a month, why wouldn't house prices go up? If you were able to keep your job, now you can really afford that house and now you have even more income to be considered when you're actually applying for a loan. Again, that would mean more demand pouring into these banks because now people really feel good because they have that extra cash and that'll drive prices up. Also in this bill, there are a lot of restrictions from a landlord standpoint. So if you are an investor, basically this this bill forbids you to sell to anybody for a period of 60 days so when you want to actually sell your house you'll have to apply to this fund and see if anybody in this fund which is mostly government entities want anything to do with your house if they don't then you can sell to the public that I mean will dramatically extend the time that you have to actually sell a home which to me sounds like it will be less supply because now if this is effective today for example all the homes that were to take this money from this fund have to wait two months before they can even show you the house and if demand stays consistent then that can absolutely push prices up also there are still a lot of unknowns personally i'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines and saving up money because i do feel like we'll have deflation first and then we will see inflation 
Deflation is where the rich get richer. They would want to see prices deflate so they can buy it down here on this dip and then ride it all the way up and that's where the real money is made down here. So I think things have to go down before they come up, but tell me what you think in the comments below. All right, that is it. If you like this video, then please like this video and share it with your friends. And if you have anything else going on, you know what to do, binge watch me. And until next time, keep your money up.